So I'm going to ask uh, council to, uh, I'll start with di zone district one and to say their name and their district and uh, we'll use that as the roll call as well. So I'll start with Councilor Poirier. Alfred Poirier, district one, Pleasant Bay, Mead Cove and Shedekin. And I'm counselor for District 2, Lori Grant, counselor and warden. Um, and I have the Marguerite area and uh, down to uh, Granite Hang and also up through Southwest Marguerite towards Lake Ainsley. Um, so that's my district. And District 3. District 3, Deputy Warden Bowman Kaisa, counselor for Inverness, which takes in just about. Uh, down to Vegan to Glendale. And District 4. Uh, District 4, Councilor John McLennan, and I serve where Cogno, Wake of Auburn, Dennis, Aberdeen, Dillon, District 5. District 5, Councilor Lynn Chapman, Council for Glendale. District 5, Lynn Chisholm, and I'm Port Hood, Marble, um, and Arias. And District 6. District 6, Catherine Gillis, and I take into. Geographically, Judith, Pregnish, Detroit, Port Hastings, Glendale, West Bay Road, West Bay, Marble Mountain. Thank you, councillors and Deputy <coughs> Warden. Um, before we uh, go into, into uh, the, um, the meeting, I just want to go over a little bit of information for your for everybody here so you'll understand how this process will work. The planning staff at Eastern District Planning Commission provided an amendment to council dated October 27, 2020, recommending the council hold a public hearing following the Shetty Camp Area Advisory Committee's motion to request the removal of campgrounds as a permitted use in residential rural zone RR1 zone. Um, this proposed change requires amendments to both the Shetty Camp Municipal Planning Strategy and the Shetty Camp Land Use Bylaw. Mr. John Bain, Director of Eastern District Planning Commission, is present at this public hearing, and following this introduction, I'll ask him to review uh, that memo. At the regular meeting of council held on November 12, 2020, council made the following motion that Council approve the first reading of the proposed amendment up to the Shetty Camp Municipal Strategy and Land Use Bylaw to remove campgrounds as a permitted use. The Municipal Government Act requires that an amendment to the Land Use Bylaw must be read twice. Before the second reading, Council must hold a public hearing on the proposed amendment. The second reading of the amendments must not occur until Council has considered any submissions made or received at the public meeting or hearing. Today is the public hearing on these proposed amendments. Council will consider the written submissions that have been provided as well as those made at the hearing today. Council will not consider any submissions made or submitted after this public hearing. No decision on the proposed amendments will be made by Council today. At the end of today's meeting, as a final agenda item, Council will choose to uh, the date of where, where a decision on this matter will be made. So that's the process that we'll be following, and uh, that's... Uh, uh, direction. So I'm now going to call on Easter District Planning staff um, John Bain uh, for his report on the removal of campgrounds as a permitted use within residential RR1 zone throughout the city camp plan. John, you have the floor. Thank you, Warden. I guess I'll take this mic. Um, so as the warden has pointed out the amendment before council this evening, this afternoon, for the public hearing, deals with uh, simply removing campgrounds as a permitted use in the municipal planning strategy and in the land use pilot. So there's a plan amendment and a, um, a zone amendment. 
So council is completely, it's completely within council's discretion to amend your bylaws. This is not something that's an appealable decision. Uh, if you do make the decision to amend your bylaw, then that goes to the, the province for ministerial approval. Uh, but if you decide not to change the bylaw, to just leave it the way it is, uh, any decision council makes either in favor of or against is not an appealable decision. It would just go to, um, to the province for approval. Uh, we have received uh, a number of phone calls on the issue, and one of the concerns that was raised was with respect to existing campgrounds, if the amendment is made. And so for, uh, it's important for council to be aware <coughs> that the intent of this is as a temporary measure uh, so that we could then take a deeper dive uh, on the whole issue of uh, campgrounds and that type of tourist development. So it's really just putting a, a pause on that type of development so that it can be addressed uh, more in more detail. The other concern that was raised is that some people saw that there were two staff reports on our webpage. And the second staff report, uh, which has different options, is not what's being considered to this afternoon. The only thing that's being considered this afternoon is that uh, removal of campgrounds from, the pl from your plan and bylaw. Uh, so as far as existing campgrounds are concerned, uh, they would continue to uh, function as a, as a legal non-conforming use. And then our intent is to come back and take a look at how to accommodate those in a more uh, you know, um, a detailed manner, looking at some of the options that we had presented in the other staff report. So that's all I have. This plan, this public hearing was advertised in accordance with the requirements of the Municipal Government Act. Uh, we did receive a number of written submissions. Those written submissions are in your package. Uh, there were some that were received late last night and early this morning. Um, so they may or may not be in your packages yet, but they will be before, your, um, before you make a decision on this, on this issue. So if Council has any questions, I'd be happy to um, answer those. Any questions from Council? Before we go any further, something I failed to do was to tell everybody to keep your masks on. We have a public coming in here. If you're speaking and you can speak through the mask, that's fine, that's better. But if you need to take it off to speak, that's okay as well. But otherwise, I ask that everybody keep their mask on and and maintain the social distancing that's required to, to keep us all safe. So from the, the, the COVID uh, pandemic. So um, we have 10 presenters and I'll call the first one as our CAO said earlier, we're trying to keep these to five minutes. If you get very far over that, I will have to call you on it, but uh, we want to keep uh, we have quite a few presentations, so we want to keep them precise. And uh, if you have written information you want to leave with us as well, feel free to do that. And uh, I think most of these presentations, if not all, are on Zoom. So we have a screen over to my left here set up. And the first person to present is John Allen of Coin. John, you have a question. We may have to tweak this a little bit to... Can everybody hear? Yes. We're, ha we're having a problem with the sound, so I don't know if my, my voice is traveling very well. Can you hear me? Very well. Great. Okay. So, my, my position on this is very simple. With an unregulated um, campground use in our community, our R1 residential, we are not advancing the interests of promoting tourism. We are not uh, maintaining the, the stated goals in the Shedekamp Municipal Planning Strategy, which is what founds the use of the bylaw uses, because it doesn't encourage orderly growth, and it does not take into consideration the land use in a manner that will 
preserve and enhance and protect both the natural and man-made environments of the community. The waves and uh, campsite, which of course is going to have to go through, but we're trying to prevent more of those from showing up or cropping up, is going to have 129 sites in a strip of land that borders onto the Cabot Trail and is going to look like a parking lot. If more of these um, types of campgrounds are going to be permitted without taking into consideration the adverse impact on the residents, and bear in mind this is a residential community, even though we're rural, if we do not protect against unregulated and untrammeled use of the lands for campgrounds, then we're not going to be able to bring more tourists into the, into the neighborhood. The gateway to the National Park, which is one of the stated goals of protection, uh, is not something that is going to be uh, well thought out. The other problem is that the traffic that's going to be created along the main highway is going to be a danger to the community. Um, so my, my points are this. In order to be able to encourage and preserve the architectural and cultural heritage of uh, Shedding Cap and to minimize the negative impact that may result from any new developments, and I, I emphasize that this is to protect against new developments, it is imperative that we have a, a moratorium on any other permitted <coughs> uses until there is a bylaw in place that can deal with regulated use of campgrounds and their associated uses. Um, that is something that I understand will follow the present uh, proposal, which is to in, um, put into place a moratorium. And I think that it is in everyone's interest that we recognize that what we're trying to do is preserve our ability to continue to promote tourism while at the same time protecting the natural beauty of our Cabot Trail. When you see advertisements promoting the Cabot Trail and, and Cape Breton, you don't see photos or movie clips of campgrounds. What you see is a beautiful highway that leads to the Highlands Park. And to have um, campgrounds being able to be dotted through uh, on the way to the campgrounds, or to, sorry, to the park, is not something that is in our interest. Uh, it has become very distressing for people who are abutting this uh, current Waves End uh, park, which of course we can't do anything about because our bylaws are are woefully inadequate to be able to deal with it. So, in order to protect against any further uh, use of the loopholes and the unregulated uh, uh, use of campgrounds for our community, it is imperative, and I urge this uh, with all my heart, that we have a moratorium in place until we can properly deal with where these campgrounds should be placed and how they should be used. Uh, those are my submissions and my, my thoughts on it. I could go on ad nauseum and, and continue, but basically in a nutshell, that's my, my stated goal of my, my talk today. Thank you. Thank you, John, and you were right on time with that, so I appreciate that. Take those things into consideration for sure. Okay, uh, next person on the list is uh, Taya Burke. Do I have that pronounced right? You, you have, you're up next. Hi, can everybody hear me? Good. Good. Okay, so um, I just wanted to voice my opinion and concern also with uh, the conversations that are going around about the campground um, being built. And I just wanted um, to make it clear that although um, there is a huge interest in uh, shutting down a lot of the campground development or uh, 
stopping anymore. Um, I think it's important to make sure that we're creating a welcoming environment for more businesses to come through um, to accommodate the influx of more tourists coming to the area. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that we're trying carefully and we're not um, discouraging more development in the area because that's what we, we want to see. We want to see more growth um, and more young families coming to the area to try and start businesses. Um, like my family that came here to try and start a business. And so, you know, saying that we just want to shut everything down and then not have any more campground development um, is not really the best way forward. I understand that we need to put some regulations in place to make sure that, you know, we're not going overboard, but, um, you know, we can't just completely shut down either. That it? Is it done there? Okay. Thank you, Tara. Ta Taya, I should say. Um, and uh, next person is Kevin Camus. Kevin, you have the floor. Person is Mark Martin Chesson. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, merci beaucoup. Uh, my name is Martin Chesson. I was born and raised in Guante Town, right on the Trail Road. And about four years ago, I built uh, a house still on the Trail Road in Point Cross at uh, 12241 Point Cross. And I'm here to support the moratorium, uh, and here's why. I, I really feel, and to Taya's point about the stuff shut everything down, I couldn't agree more. I think this is a conversation about how do we remain pro campground development while not interfering with the incredible, incredible uh, source of scenery and beauty that the Cabot Trail is offering to people from across the entire world. And I'm very optimistic that we can accomplish both pro campground development, pro beautiful natural scenery for two reasons. Number one, Inverness County has done this before. And number two, we can learn from other beautiful communities and villages elsewhere on the planet who have figured out how to balance both. So let me explain what I mean by both of my comments. The first one about Inverness County having done this before. My research, and don't hold me to the exact number, but it, it would appear that we have about 20 campgrounds in the vicinity of Inverness County. I suspect a few of them probably uh, are in Victoria as well, but it's all part of the Cabin Trail. And I look, you know, 20 campgrounds, that's a lot. And my excitement is that from the hundreds of times I've, I've toured the trail, I don't remember any of them really posing uh, or interfering with the natural beauty of the trail. And yet some of them have been around for 50 plus years. So the people who built them, uh, I give them credit, and I also give credit to some of the planning commission people who must have worked with them to say, hey, we can build this campground, which is an essential service if you're going to have tourists. But we can avoid putting them in a place that will diminish the beauty. So to the planning people, if you've been involved with that, congratulations. I suspect that a lot of the development, though, has happened because of good luck. Because a number of these places around the trail do not have bylaws that would have guided people as to where to put their campground. And unfortunately, last year, as Ms. 
you for a red shirt, uh, bit of our good luck ran out. And we're here today because we're saying, okay, can we readjust? But the fact that 20 campgrounds already over 50 years have been built without interfering gives me great optimism that with a few guidelines, well thought out, collaboration with the community, we can achieve both. And my second reason for being optimistic is looking at places around the world. I'll tell you a quick story that prior to COVID, I had the good fortune of visiting this small village that has 3,800 people, has incredible coastline beauty, and has a world-class golf course at its doorstep. Now you may think he's talking about Margarita, or that's for Fort Hood, or Shetikana, where is he talking about? You're right, although the average temperature of this place year-round is 19 degrees Celsius. What I'm talking about is a quaint village called Carmel by the sea in Monterey County, California. I couldn't be furthest away from us, right? But what do they have? They have what's called the 17-mile drive, which is a coastal drive that brings you to the community. We have the Cabo Trail, which is 185 miles. They have the number one public golf course in the U.S. called Pebble Beach. We have that. Guess what? Their beauty with the 17 mile drive and with Pebble is no better than our beauty with uh, Cabot Trail and Cabot Cliff in the base. I was having breakfast the final day I was there and the gentleman who served us I asked him, how long have you lived here? He said, over 20 years. I said, you must have seen lots of change in 20 years. He said, not really. And that's the way we like it. Well, that's interesting. I said, why do you say that? He applauded the government official for resisting the temptation of allowing commercial development to take over the coastline of Carmel. And just remember this, Carmel is less than two hours from one of the wealthiest cities in the world called San Francisco. And it also welcomes over 4 million visitors every year. Nova Scotia, all of the province, does those two and a half. So to put it in perspective, can you imagine how tempting it was to put commercial development right on the 17 mile drive? What they did instead is work with the community, they remained pro development, and they had bylaws where if you wish to camp, and I welcome all of you to Google camping in Monterey County or camping in Carmel, you will see tons of campgrounds. Nowhere in sight of the beauty that brings the people there in the first place. So, in summary, uh, we've done it before in the rest. We've done it 20, 22 times or so. We can do it again with a few guidelines. And if Carmel by the Sea has resisted the temptation of all the money they could have picked up uh, with all the entrepreneurs, and they just said, slow down, we will devise the guidelines that can allow development and can maintain the beauty. If they've done it, we can make sure that we do it as well. And what I loved about this gentleman's quote, he said, you know, the local government officials made sure that no one was going to muck up our beautiful scenery. And I hope together that's what we'll do with the Cabin Trail and the beautiful scenery we provide. Thank you, Merci. Thank you very much. Appreciate your presentation, and we'll certainly take that into consideration. Thank you. Um, has Kevin joined us there yet, or do we want to just move on? Yeah, we should, I think we'll move on to the next one again and see okay. if we can pick up Kevin at the end. Okay. So the next person is Betty Ann Carmier.
code development, or coding, I should say. <coughs>
to go? Are you there? Kevin? I need Kevin? Beside you, 
all of a sudden be turned into something that you do not like to see and that the community views um, visibly um, as a deterrent rather than an attraction. Okay? The climate emergency needs to be taken into account by both as well because of the location of the property in question. There are shorelines, and shoreline properties are very special from numerous perspectives, and they should be protected from commercial development. I don't know if you know this or not, but 90% of Inverness County shoreline properties are now owned by people outside of Canada. So uh, when I did, uh, I, I've been involved in recreation leadership for a long time, along with the environmental movement and social activism. So I spent uh, a few hours uh, doing my research about some of the things that I've noticed across Canada, and I've lived in or traveled to every province and every territory in Canada, and I have seen hundreds or thousands of RV parks or campgrounds. So, you know, I found this comment from uh, uh, one of the sites and, and said, how long I used to pass RV parks and remark on how crowded and un, uh, unnatural they look. We could not imagine ourselves staying in RV parks. And we naturally assume that if you want to avoid RV parks, you should not own an RV. Well, an RV park is considered to be part of the hospitality industry and is therefore a com considered commercial. So in looking, you know, at, at, uh, at a number of different RV uh, sites, um, there's a whole list of, of things that people that use RV parks want to see. So they want to be set in other residential and commercial development. They, the area should be large enough to uh, have pole food for their trailer and adequate breathing space between the units so that people that are in those units you know, have space to, to do different things. Shade trees are a must. When I, when I uh, read that, I, I, was, I, thought I couldn't help it. I broke up laughing because there are no shade trees whatsoever in, in, in this area in particular. But it, what it does is it speaks to those areas where RV people want to be away from the community and they want to have shade trees. Large streets between the units with no speed bumps. So, you know, <laughs> A common swimming pool is a significant determining factor. The area sh uh, should feel like a community rather than a parking lot. That phrase, parking lot, was you know named earlier, and you're, that's exactly what it looks like right now. Uh, rules and regulations regarding substance abuse, uh, public intoxication, visitors, noise curfew times, like generators running, must be enforced whether by the owner or the police. Now, where are those bylaws here in Inverness County? I've been looking. So surprisingly enough, RV parks also, in many, many places, have what's called a 10-year rule. So that if your RV is 10 years or older, then many parks won't let you in because there'd be, you know, to be weathered or warm. So access to Wi-Fi is another. Clean, warm bathrooms with lots of hot water. OK, on this site, where are you going to get enough hot water uh, you know, and handle all of the sewage that's involved and you are right beside the ocean. Where is this going to go, right? Laundry facilities with commercial sized washers and dryers. Picnic tables for each lot. Now notice that we're not talking about fire pits, okay? And, and that's an important thing because uh, many RV parks don't want fires in there because of their neighbors. They don't want the smell of smoke, you know, or what it does to their kids or anyway. Generous terms with complete full disclosure, as an example. Great staff that are courteous, knowledgeable, and informed. And that's what I think most Cape Bretoners are. You know, most of us are, you know, are courteous, knowledgeable, and informed. And what we want is we want reasonable, intelligent uh, bylaws, you know, that are put together, you know, by all of us uh, collectively uh, participating you know, in a good way. Anyway, thank you so much. Oh, sorry, I have one, one more uh, thing here. I, I read over the Inverness bylaw regarding fracking, and uh, it was interesting. Uh, in, in paragraph 10, uh, right down towards the bottom, uh, the last quote says, uh, you know, in regards to fracking, and I think many of you would know that, but it says, provide that in a, uh, in a, in a prosecution of, of violation of a, a bylaw, 
evidence that one neighbor is disturbed is prima facie it, evidence that the neighborhood is disturbed. So, you know, <laughs> is it, <laughs> is it, is it, is it disturbed? <laughs> uh, anyway, it, it makes a question. You know, if we have, you know, people who are upset about this, yeah, um, I, I think that we need to come together and, uh, you know, look towards our future with this. Anyway, thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, next on the um, presentations is Mr. R. Roach. And that was one of the last ones put on today. Mr. Roach? Or Kevin McCune? That's too long, go ahead. Was that presentation too long? Oh, no. No, you were pretty well away on the five minutes. But you can stay muted now, thank you, Paul. Um, Kevin Henry sent a message saying he's on a job site, so with week service, so he's listening, but we'll be commenting. And I don't see anybody else. You may want to pass it on to Kevin that if he wants to submit a written proposal by the end of the day, if he wants to make any comments, he could do that too. So everybody's presented that. Is it yes. Do I get it right? I didn't get completely. What uh, what is that thing with Kevin Davis? He's on a job site and he can't oh, okay. do it right now. Yeah, can't speak internet. Yeah, thank you. So I just wanted to have the message yeah, so that okay. he can submit it in writing. Yes. That, that, would come, sure. that would still allow him to get it. His opinions out there. Um, and, and Betty Ann Cormier, we missed. And Kevin, no, uh, yeah. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin McEwen and Kevin Aaron. Yeah. So we, I just want to make sure that it's not a technical thing on their, on, on their Zoom meeting that is causing this. So we can double check there just to make sure they're not. Sitting in a limbo there with a technical problem, we might be able to help. I think that's everybody. Is that okay? Okay. The next item on our agenda is uh, any questions from council? Oh, so oh. Uh, there may be some presenters. Uh, oh, is there any other presenters there? <laughs> any other presenters in the room? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Five minutes is the limit, but you can have a mic there and you have a floor. Maybe introduce yourself. And am I able to take my mask off here? Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to introduce myself for people that don't know who I am. Um, my name is Lucille Timmons. I am owner of Cape Breton Vacations, Cabo Trail Vacations, sorry. Uh, RV cottages uh, in Point Cross. Um, we have two RV cottages on our property. I'm also uh, uh, a member on the Advisory Planning Commission Committee. Um, and I work uh, as a Community Economic Development Officer for Sydney, which is a development economic um, community for the Acadian communities in Nova Scotia. So um, my background, um, the reason why that I was chosen to sit on the advisory committee is um, in community economic development, local tourism development, uh, tourism accommodation owner myself, and I am a, a resident of Shedden Camp, born and raised. All my ancestors are here. My uh, maiden name is a Lorad. Um, so, um, I've been following the comments, complaints very closely from the onset of the first complaint to Eastern District Planning Commission about the campground in Point Cross. 
I have also done some research, research on campgrounds in residential areas, and none of them have had any of these complaints that have been brought forth. I have also worked with most tourism accommodation owners throughout the Cabot Trail for the past 10 years as facade and streetscape program coordinator and have had many, many chats about how business was going and if there were any complaints from neighbours. Most, if not all, of the complaints did not come from in and around campgrounds. They came mostly from other types of accommodations, restaurants, bars, etc. The major complaints that I heard at our previous planning advisory committee are not due to location of the campgrounds, but more of the aesthetics, noise, slow moving traffic pulling in and out of the campgrounds on the main Cava Trail, uh, which would make it dangerous and also campfire smoke. I don't believe that any of these complaints warrant placing tougher restrictions on new campground development uh, locations. All that would do is hinder new development in our beautiful Shetty Camp region. There has and always will be some form of complaints with any new development. For example, helicopter tours. We just recently started, uh, we have a landing pad um, just um, in Petita Tang, uh, they started wonderful helicopter tours for our tourists and our locals and Facebook blew up with complaints about all this helicopter noise over. So also another um, development lately is the development of the gypsum mines, uh, which is a beautiful locals only uh, area. Um, we've been promoting it, and now there's garbage everywhere. Um, there's a lot of traffic on the side of the roads. Um, so these complaints are warranted, and they are uh, an item that needs to be faced. However, if we would say, well, we don't like the helicopter noise, so no, there's not going to be any more helicopter tours. We can't have that. They can go elsewhere. Um, For any other issues, as environmental, sewage, water, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there are governmental agencies that are experts and are paid well to deal with these issues. I believe a good option, maybe a happy medium to this controversy, would be to keep the campground bylaw as is, with the addition of a design aesthetic beautification guidelines regulations. Similar structure to structure to the guidelines I had developed for the Cabot Trail Facade and Streetscape Program Phase 2 back in 2016. Each new campground development would have to present their design conceptual plan to the Planning Advisory Committee or Eastern District Planning Commission for approval before starting so then they could make certain adjustments or whatever. These guidelines could deal with issues such as signage, lighting, aesthetics, beautification of the property that's supposed to be developed, landscaping, spacing within campsites, etc., etc. Most of these issues were mentioned here before by other present presenters. Um, one more note, um, if council decides that they approve these proposed changes <coughs> to the campground bylaw, then these changes should be implemented throughout Inverness County and not just the region of Shanghai. It would be unfair and would cause future developers to go anywhere but our region for these region, region, reasons of changing the bylaws in just this Shetty Camp region. Why would it not be, if you're changing these bylaws, they should pertain to all of Inverness County or even Richmond County as well, all that pertain to the Cabot Trail, our beautiful Cabot Trail. That's it for me, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other presentations <laughs> from the floor? One more time. Any other presentations from the floor? <coughs> Any other written submissions to come forward? No? Okay. If not, um, you have till the end of, anybody has till the end of the day to submit?
a written submission. Um, are there any questions from council members? I have one for you, Gordon. Okay. Uh, what time today for people that want to uh, to uh, get their letters in? Like there must be a time. I'll ask uh, Debbie. Uh, there's it would go to Debbie Nicholson here. The end of business today. Four o'clock today. Okay, just so we we state that and it's <coughs> what time. Councillor Chisholm. I just have one question for um, Lucille. Is your presentation is that have you sent that to council or is it just? I sent that to uh, John, Alfred, and Eve. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any chance you can send it to Debbie? Yes, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. uh, I look forward to it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions of councillors? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, first of all, I would like to thank everybody here today, uh, especially the sponsors. You know, there's uh, different issues. You know, I, one issue that I thought that was never mentioned was the economy the impact that it has to it has on our community and also uh, different issues but I will be looking at uh, both issues you know both uh, pros and cons you know uh, about the situation and I want to thank uh, Lucia the present also here <coughs> excuse me and uh, the decision like we said will be made uh, accordingly in the next few weeks and uh, at that point I will have whatever it is decided I will have a, a full report on my part to my community and to the county also. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments from council? Uh, uh, <coughs> a few comments. You know this uh, RV park, I know we have four of them in this four. That's why Cogma the one in my car, my two that came, aims to be one down the Portage Road, and also we have a uh, provincial park. And uh, I was asked to check from the owners and the neighbors and around each park to find out about noise, about whatever you wanted to know. And uh, the people in the areas were saying, you, wouldn't, you really wouldn't know the trailer park was there unless you've seen the trailers. And you know, they're all kept clean, and like uh, Miss Tinnan said, there's some rules and regulations from the provincial government on water and sewer. But, it, but and on the other hand, it is a tourist industry. And you have to look at the fact that uh, these people that come to the area, they spend a lot of money on food, groceries, gas, and etc. So that's uh, one reason. And, uh, then as far as the noise factor, I asked each owner, usually nine, <coughs> o'clock, it's all over. You know, they're in bed, and, and as far as traffic goes, these people are on vacation, they don't leave at seven in the morning, 20, 30 cars going down the road. It's their vacation, they usually walk. So that's uh, my opinion on it, and I know our decision will be difficult, and we're going to make some people less happy than others. So that's my thought on the trailer parks. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, RV Park Short. Thank you, Councilor McClellan. Any other questions or comments? Okay. I'm just showing up late. I'm sorry, my name is Glenn Roach. I was reserved to be here today. But I'm only making it in now. Are you here to make a presentation? Uh, I haven't even heard anything at all, but yes, I have a concern greatly about. You the want to come over to the over to the mic here, Brian? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right. My name is Apollo Glenn Roach. I am a citizen of uh, Shetty Camp. I uh, was born and raised here at Shetty Camp. Uh, I have concerns about a lot of things. That's why I guess I'm late. The RR1 zone, I believe, is a recreation, campground, and golf course. And being in the industry, 
in the recreation, it's a wonderful world. And where we're coming into with the brand new world, with the COVID, the recreation is, is, is greatly developing vastly. A lot of people living off grid, venturing things in life. <coughs> By removing or implementing new legislation or rules, sanctions, or bylaws in the back roads of Shetty Camp, I oppose it only for this reason. There is not enough substantial area for the millions of tourists that we welcome and cherish, champion on our beautiful island. Where are they going to go? We all know it's developing. Recreation, off-grid, tiny homes, buildings, recycling of sea cans, If it's removed by having campgrounds in our back roads, in Inverness County and elsewhere, you're gonna tamper and you're going to affect our economy in our village, villages. Everybody profits from it. Everyone, restaurants, gas stations, co-op, everybody, propane. You meet and greet. It's COVID friendly. There's distancing. There's a big, huge demand for RV services. I am one to start that this spring or fall or summer. I'm hoping that it'll work. The next service tech is in Verdor. So, <clears throat> sales, trailer park. We have places all over Inverness County that we are, we come from vill fishing villages. Boats are parked everywhere and wide open. We don't hear or anything that the wind tears it down. We have bragging rights with our winds. We know how to build houses, roofs. We can sustain or come to agreements. And by the way, we are much better than what you see in Shetty Camp, all right? I'm ashamed of this place. I'll get to it after. We need to come together and come up with a solution where recreation, working with the National Park, and all the wonderful businesses and the new people who are venturing into this. Scott McPherson, a good, good friend of mine. I tip my hat for this guy. He's a resident of Shetty Camp. A couple of years back, I would have never dreamed <coughs> Scott would have been doing what he's doing today. Holy. So, and I, I wish him all the best. I know within 20 days that place is going to be packed. So him and his partner, I welcome him to our, our beautiful town here. And it's unfortunately that we have to go, or some of them we got to go, to earn a living elsewhere where their heart and soul is right here where we stand. When I say I'm ashamed of this place, it's not because of what it can't offer. It's the negligence of whatever it is at 51 years old. I'm stained. I'm sorry. But living in the back roads, this is the mistake. As soon as I step on the back roads of Shetty Camp, folks, is it Shetty Camp or is it Shetty Camp back roads or is it Bell Marsh where I come from? There's a GPS that when you put Shetty Camp, it takes you to the back roads. Tours are confused. They stop and ask me, where's Shetty Camp? Where's the gypsum mine? So we need to advertise and fix that. I talked to Mr. Alfred Arturo here, July, we had an issue. He said, it's going to cost $250,000 maybe to change it. And I know, but it's, it is what it is. So that's a boo-boo, but yet a brilliant marketing strategy when it comes to advertising. The flow on Chevy Camp Back Roads has never been so in high demand. And it's not just because of the National Park. It ain't no nowhere. It's the beautiful little hole, three minutes from my home, which is called the Gypsum Mine. That is the nugget of what's going to bring people more into this town, as well as the National Park. Just hey. to stop you there. Everglades got five minutes, so you're. Just, oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So you got to. Um, Is there anybody that didn't show up? Yeah. I, I, I don't care if the queue broke down, so I'm um, no, just no, here. No, you got a couple of minutes left. 
couple of minutes. So um, let's come together and fix this place. All right? We have to. The boardwalk, the, the, there's a lot of things to talk about, but the Shinnecan Bark Road, is, you can't ruin it. We have a beautiful place, and we have to come together. All businesses, too. We can do better, and I don't want no walls to be created. So I'm going to be neutral, but I hope to God that whatever decision be made, it doesn't take away my little dreams that I've been working on for 25 years, because I worked hard for it. And I gotta get off of this system I'm on because I'm much more worthy than where I am. So I am gonna work my ass off very shortly because I did get reported from Eastern District Planning Committee regarding my area, residence, land, an eyesore. But I'm a man of recyclable things. I fix things. And I bring things that are garbage back to life. And if I have to get rid of things that I've been doing for all my life, I will. I'm here to work together, but I have to develop my own little niche in my own backyard in Shetika. And I just don't want problems more than what I'm getting where I'm going with this. Thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry for being late. I hope that I represented myself well. Um, I didn't swear. <laughs> and that's a good thing, all right? God bless you well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you did well. Good job. Good job. <laughs> okay. Any anybody else? I'll call one more time. Nobody else with the door. Okay. Um, next uh, the date of our next meeting. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you wanted to. Oh, I okay. just wanted to uh, thank all of those that presented, either by Zoom or written or in person. It's all very passionate, and we heard you. Um, but I also want to thank Shady Kim for hosting us today because it was great to come to Shady Kim mm -hmm. and we didn't get blown away, so it was great. <laughs> blown away by the hospitality. But <laughs> absolutely right. And uh, I'll echo that as well as Warden. And uh, uh, we always have to be a little nervous when we talk about getting blown away when we hear we've got a breeze in our community, a uh, 100 kilometer an hour wind. Alfred looks at us and says, that's just a little puff down in Chitty County, so um, we get no big wins today, but you guys have certainly had your share lately, and uh, um, like Len said, you, you know how to construct your roofs and your houses, and, uh, and uh, in many cases, those winds uh, that would probably rip most communities apart uh, <coughs> keep you guys uh, all, all safe and sound here because of your good work, and uh, I thank the community of Shetty Camp for hosting us today as well. And hopefully we can do you justice when we review this. And uh, we have the best interest in the community in mind and the municipality. And uh, we'll do our best to give our best judgment on this. So having said that, we will... Uh, next meeting. Next meeting. This will be the meeting that this will be... in all meetings of council, I, I must say, are public. You don't have an opportunity to speak at a council meeting unless you're on the agenda. But uh, if people want to attend the next meeting, if this is where, when it's going to be discussed, everybody's. Uh, we have, uh, the only thing we have to be cautious there is COVID um, and the number of people. So that could be require us to to limit the number of people. So we may have a. If we expect a large crowd, we may have people registered till we fill the. The facility with what we are allowed for uh, for, for for people. So, um, would we uh, look at doing this at our next council meeting? Probably, I would think. And our next council meeting is March fourth, and it's a little bit different this time, which may be a good thing for those who want to attend. It's going to be at six p.m. at Council Chambers on the second floor of the Municipal Building in Port Hood. So it'll be at 6 p.m. and we'll be, we're doing that because we have some organizations that can't be there with us during the, uh, business hours uh, to make presentations, not on this matter, but on other matters. Um, so we'll be, be uh, hearing from them as well at that time. So 6 p.m., March 4th, at the Municipal Building, Second Floor Council Chambers. Perfect. Any questions to that? So that'll be the next meeting. And with that, I'll ask for a motion from council to adjourn the meeting. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second
moved by Deputy Warren Corey, second by John McCormick. Thank you everybody for coming and your attention today on these very important items. Thank you.